and I was feeling like really run down and I was like, how can I be working out but feeling worse? So I was like, okay. So I went to the doctor, I got a checkup and the blood work came back and they were like, hey, your TSH hormone levels are off and it looks like your thyroid is not working up to par, it's really slow. Um, so you need to get further checked out. And I did, they took like a sonogram of your neck and then it came out that it's um, not only hypothyroidism, but there's some nodules there. So it's also um, Hashimoto's uh, thyroid. So basically your immune system attacks your thyroid and it's just like a big fight. And then eventually your thyroid is supposed to just stop working. So you take medication every day and then whatever. But anyway, so that can lead to many different things in your body. And one of them is lymphedema. And so I recently, I was like, why do I always feel swollen on this side of my body? And I feel like I get a little pain here and in certain areas, like where my lymphatic system would be, but on this side of my body, my left side. So I started reading on how to kind of like get your lymphatic system going because since quarantine, I'm less active. And now that I'm not working, I'm even, you know, less, you know, running around or anything like that. So I was like, how do people do it? People say you've got to drink water more. You've got to jump rope or do more exercise to get your system going. Um, take a shower and hot water, but then turn on the cold water to kind of like get your uh, lymphatic system going. Um, do the dry brushing, brush your body upwards and stuff. Because seriously, like I could be one shoe size on my left foot and a different size on my right. And for me, I was like, is this the beginning of lymphedema? Is this the beginning of my body hurting and swelling, you know, on certain parts? So, yeah. Wow. Um, well, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're really proactive on, on getting the details to, to get through the day because I, I understand it's, it's not easy. I mean, me personally, I, I go through some health issues myself with, um, with inflammation. Um, in fact, um, I'm very reactive to, to certain smells to the point that not only do I get nauseous, but also my, um, the circulation to my feet gets really slow and painful. So I, I have to be like very cautious, cautious of how my environment is. Um, if there's too many toxins going on in one environment, I can't be there for too long. You know, reasons why, um, even in certain department stores, I just won't bother going to again because some department stores use more chemicals than others, like, um, what's this place called? That they have pretty much have like, uh, like linen and, and a lot of, um, housewares, but like very cheap. It's a, it's next like to home the, goods or something. Yeah. Something is something like, something like home goods. I think it is home goods itself. I haven't been there so long. It's been like three years since the last time I went there. And I realized that when buying, buying stuff there, if I'm going to buy it, I have to go in and out immediately throw it into the washing machine and then use it. The last time I went there, I bought curtains and, and, uh, uh, some towels and I could, cannot get through the smells. I wrapped everything up in bags and garbage bags and whatnot. And then went straight to the, the, to the, to the laundry mat and washed everything to get the smell out of it. Then I was able to use it. Oh, wow. So, now, no, it, it's not easy for, for Carmen either. You know, she, it's hard for her to, you know, keep the patience all the time with it. Cause there's some things I react to and it's like, wow, what, what can you, when can you not, so I used to try to keep a list of it, but you know, it was just so stressful sometimes, but you know, at, at this point, I'm just glad that we've came to many agreements and how we deal with products inside the household, how we clean, and that's minimized the, the reaction. Also well, just by smelling it, you get a reaction or by touching it, like detergent wise, like if it was on like the curtain and you touched it or whatever they washed it with or whatever, just, that react to or just the smell? I wouldn't get an external reaction. Like, um, I don't break out like in hives, but the smell of it automatically, it makes it harder for me to breathe. And then my legs start to swell and it, mm. it get really tight. So then I have to, in fact, what I do as weird as it sounds, 
for me to get rid of the smell when I'm outside of that environment, I um, I uh, I rinse my mouth with a little bit of salt, just to balance that out. And then after that, I um, it's almost like gargling with salt. And then after that, gargle. I'll Which is always more. good, people say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, when I was out in um in your place out, when um, uh, your daughter and I were were cleaning up with all the chemicals. I was like, okay, now that we're done cleaning, you know, I understand, you know, in this small space in this spot that, that we did the most work, it feels really hot. And, you know, we'll turn on the AC, open up the windows or whatnot a little more. But most of all, gargle some salt and you'll see how you'll get right back into balance. And immediately once she tried it, she's like, oh, that does, I, I can actually stand up straight now because she was starting to get dizzy. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Then after mm -hmm. that, I was like, "Look, you don't have to continue cleaning. You're you you're good." But you know, in case in case of you sure, it wasn't a ploy, Manny. They just trying to get out of the housework. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I could totally <laughs> totally understand. You know, the chemicals is it, it's no joke. You know? Oh yeah. But um, yeah, it, it really does help. That little bit of that little trick has helped me a lot. However, um, it annoys me sometimes the fact that I I can't be around heavy chemicals. Because people love love using um fragrances and stuff like that, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. for that reason, I can't be around certain people with too many fragrances, as I suffer, and and I don't think I should put myself in that predicament of suffering so much with smelling that when it's but, like my recovery. Like I have to spend like two days like drinking a lot of water and trying to recover from that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Does does um does Emmy have the same thing or is? Does any anybody is it hereditary? Um, I was hoping that it was hereditary because, in at least in that case, I could get some answers. Right. I was just gonna say so you can get a little more feedback on how to deal with it or how to cope with it or how to treat most of it. Well, um, at at this point, um, the lymphedema is is pretty heavy for for Emmy at this point, but he has told me instances that certain um, fragrances does put him in like a dizzy spell and he does get a reaction. I'm not sure if it's like related to the same thing, but I take that also as a warning sign of that. Maybe me reacting to this now can help me prevent that lymphedema to, to grow to that level to where okay. he is now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, seriously, because I mean, not nobody nobody looks for any of these issues um in their lifetime and there's so many things in the around us that people go through that we don't even think twice like maybe we can suffer from it down the road therefore we don't educate ourselves on it but listening to this knowing that you know it's close to home knowing that it's it really does affect your day-to-day -day life you know like certain fragrances and then circulation circulation is a very serious thing um you know and inflammation and things like that lymphedema i mean it's serious like you know and then it can lead to other kind of congestions in your body and stuff like that so all of that ties in and it's really good to know you, you know important sometimes i wish they would talk about you know things more like that in our education because Someone in your family is either diabetic, right? I have diabetes in my family, yeah. right? Somebody's asthmatic in the family. You either have that. So a lot of times you don't get educated until you get it or someone close to you gets it, right? Yeah. So it's really, it's, it's not like we can have a big round table of helping each other with it and, and know the precursors because we don't know until sometimes it's already advanced. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So true. Um, I, I used to listen to some of my dad's conversations as much as I was supposed to not be in the middle of it. <laughs> but I took that as, you know, an opportunity to just stop and listen to what the adults are talking about. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just thank God that um, I was able to pull out some key elements there onto how to prepare yourself for older age. You know, I think that discussion doesn't happen much nowadays because um, I think it made it even worse for my generation. Um, we were the generation that really started ignoring what our parents were saying. And mm -hmm. it's only getting worse now to the point that they don't realize that 
sooner or later, you're going to be 30. Sooner or later, you're going to be 40. That's true. And after that, if you're lucky enough and you did listen to what you were supposed to do when your mm -hmm. body was reacting to certain things and you took care of it, you're going to make it to 50, 60, and 70. Maybe you'll start having more respect for what happened to, to your parents because when no one's exempt to old age. It's going to happen. Right. Right. Um, I used true. to listen to my dad talk a lot about that. Like, first thing was, um, the man is supposed to pay attention to what's happening to his feet. Because we rely so much on circulation. Now, for the woman, she, she doesn't rely as much as circulation from the feet. Because women normally have more better circulation than men do from the feet. As mm -hmm. so, hence why women have stronger lower bodies than men do. You know, it's, uh, it's just a uh, natural biology. And I used to think like, okay, but you know, we're, we're both human and uh, we should just pay attention to what our body does. It shouldn't mean that. But as I see time passing time and time again, every time I used to see men with bad health, it used to start with their feet. Soon after that, it goes to their calves, their, their, their quads, their stomach, which is the whole, everything that has to do with hormones and, and the heart. I used to be like, why is it that they keep calling, you know, the calves and the legs, the, the second heart? What do you mean the second heart? We only have one. <laughs> what do you mean? I didn't know that. That's interesting. Turns out my dad knew why he was talking about because doctors, they talk about that um, we need healthy calves in order to help pump blood back into our hearts. It doesn't just go one way and then just circulates and goes back up to our brain. Otherwise, basically, we wouldn't need legs at all. But the well, fact that the yeah. blood goes down, it has to find a way to pump back up. And our calves is the key to help pump that back up. However, if there's a lot of issues happening in the feet where um, toxins aren't being um, um, eradicated fast enough, which is antioxidants mm -hmm. and stuff like that, then they don't come back up. This is why antioxidants are so necessary to uh, to help the heart in itself it's it's such a weird thing in 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 its entirety but when you really start paying attention to the long game of how that plays out it's it's so true like um with with athletes athletes tend to have less issues with their heart within within their age range of 30 and 40 they don't start having heart issues to for between 40 and 50 but at the average person there's no telling what could happen to their heart between the ages of 25 and 35 mm -hmm. due to that, that inactivity and not knowing that certain foods affect that and the lack of, uh, of um, pushing themselves to be outdoors doesn't help either. Like our, our dream life always as a kid is, oh, we just love to stay home, watch everything, what I want, everything that I want and eat everything I want and be around really fun friends. But uh, when we get older, we start realizing that um, as good as that sounds, we can't do that seven days a week. 